Hello and happy birthday to all of the March Aries out there. Welcome to your March 2023 tarot card reading. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. For those of you who are new here, my name is Jane. Thank you all so much for being here. So March is a huge month and astrologically, we astrologers have been looking at March 2023 for a really long time. Now I am going to be posting the astrology segments in a separate video in the next couple of days. So this video is only going to be the tarot card reading. But if you want to get notified for that astrology segment, please make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell because there is just so much going on in March. It's definitely one of the months that's like a must see, must pay attention, must know. So anyway, this, this video is only going to be the tarot card reading. Um, please make sure to check out your sun, moon, or rising sign. And if you're here for love, you're more than welcome to check out your Venus sign as well. Um, and with that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into the reading. Hello, Aries. Welcome to your March 2023 tarot card reading. So let's go ahead and take a look, see what comes through with my intuitive deck, Aries. Start off this reading for March. Okay, I'm I'm hearing like a foghorn. I don't <laughs> I don't know why. Um, perhaps maybe there's something you need to say. There's something you need to say to get off your chest. Something that has been building up for a long time something that you feel is important and maybe to a degree you have felt unheard. Uh, I, I feel like if you are in a relationship, this is something that has been brewing for a while and it's going to like really come out. Okay. <laughs> it's going to really come out in a uncontrollable or a loud or an angry kind of way. If this is in business, you know, you might be frustrated professionally a little bit. Maybe you're frustrated with people not taking notice or you're frustrated with a lack of progress or something. Um, now I don't have recommendations for you. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what you should do. All right. I think processing what's coming up for you though, and thinking about it and communicating it in a way that is easy for other people to understand. And I don't mean make it easy for them because you're accommodating them. It's like, if you really want a solution, they're going to have to understand what's going on. Okay. So you're going to have to find a way to communicate it effectively. And if there is something really building up emotionally, um, it can be hard sometimes to really articulate what it is that's needing to be said or what it is that's needing to be done. And sometimes it's even hard to understand what the best solution even is. It's just like, this is just a feeling or just an emotion, or this is just something that I have. And I don't, you know, Aries, you may not have an answer right away. And so effective communication is going to be important because another person might be able to help you figure out the best solution. Okay. But I'm definitely hearing something like coming out loud and clear from my Aries people loud and clear. All right, let's take a look here. Um, major arcana. What is it that needs to, that Aries needs to, um, what does the universe need from you Aries for the month of March? We have the chariot. Okay. This is very movement oriented. It's growth oriented, has a lot to do with, I guess, getting to the next level, but there's a lot of higher consciousness involved with the chariot as well. Okay. The chariot energy is highly self-aware. Okay. Just like all the major arcana cards are, but this one, especially because I feel that this is you being hyper aware of your own humanness you being hyper aware of your own, um, it's like your higher self being aware of your lower consciousness self, so to speak. Now the chariot is empowered. Um, and I'm wondering if something isn't bubbling up from a lack of empowerment, right? If there's something that you don't feel like you have real control over, like you don't have real control over it. You don't have 
a lot of say in it. You don't have a lot of authority. You know, I'm almost kind of feeling like uh, almost like a, the inner child throwing a little bit of a temper tantrum or something. And it's, it's needing to like scream and yell for a minute. Now I'm just saying that internally, right? We all have that. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's coming from a lack of authority. All right. Or a lack of power. So there's a, there's a choice. There's an option for you on the table to, to feel empowered. And it has a lot to do with perspective and it has a lot to do with choices. Okay. If you have areas of your life where you are feeling disappointed or you're feeling frustrated or whatever the case may be, um, it's important to acknowledge your participation in those things. Okay. And I'm not saying everything is your fault. All right. I know we're all co-creators here, but to accept responsibility for your part in this and to choose different things this time, right? We have to choose different actions, choose different mindsets, choose different behaviors and different habits and all those kinds of things. Now, Aries is going through a massive, and we'll talk more about this with the astrology portion of this reading, but with Saturn coming in the 12th, there is a massive unraveling for Aries that is being done. Okay. And sometimes that unraveling can feel really unstable, but you Aries internally are your own source of stability. When everything else around you is going wonky, you have to remain stable for your own sake. Okay. Now in the environment, we have a King of Wands. Um, this I really like because I feel this is someone with whom you share a vision. This is someone with whom, uh, you can share ideas and creative, you know, passions and someone that you can talk to for a really long time. And, they see the bigness. Now with the chariot energy and a king of wands, there's definitely bigness in Aries eyes, right? You're looking for a bigger life. Now that doesn't mean necessarily like materialistically, although for some of you definitely might, but it may just mean, you know, you want more freedom in your life or you want to move to a quieter place out of the city, or you're, you know, you're wanting something, um, something bigger, than where you currently are. This foghorn energy may also be a sense of frustration of feeling like you can't do something. You feel like you can't do something because you don't have the resources or you don't have the right people or so-and-so isn't on board. And so therefore you have to stay back for them or whatever the case is. Um, that, I mean, that's highly plausible. But the King of Wands is someone who is going to look at you. Now, this may be romantic and it might not be. It could be like a mentor or someone that you work with or someone that you just happen to see on social media. But a King of Wands is someone who would legit look you straight dead in the eye and be like, what are you going to do about it? All right, so the situation sucks. And what are you going to do about it? And as much as we want to be in our feelings and yes, it's Pisces season. And for you, especially it's 12th house. We've got Saturn moving in there and all that. But at the end of the day, okay, <laughs> Venus in your sign, Jupiter in your sign, Mars over in Gemini, there are lots of energies pulling you toward new progress for new things. And this person specifically is here to keep you focused on the future rather than focused on the things that are needing to fall apart in your life. Okay. I mean, it, it wouldn't be a surprise if something in your life falls apart. You guys, honestly, I, Saturn in the 12th, not only is it in the 12th, but it is also in Pisces. It's like a double whammy of Piscean energy. All right. <laughs> there, there's definitely going to be a lot of falling apart but that's great. You can embrace it. You can let it go. And some of you are going to be like, Oh, thank goodness. This is over. Thank goodness. This is like the last leg of whatever it is I'm going through. Um, but this person here is like, focus on the future, focus on tomorrow, focus on what you can do today, focus on where you want to go. And, and there's a lot of just like, don't even worry about yesterday. It doesn't even matter. It's not even a thing. Don't worry about the lack of resources. It doesn't matter. It's not even a thing. Just take steps as much as you can toward the thing that you want to get to. Okay. 
I think the King of Wands is someone that Aries wants to, like, you kind of want to be in their circle, you know? You like them, you enjoy their company, you enjoy their energy, you enjoy their vision, their work ethic. There's a lot that you respect about them. So when they tell you something, Aries, like, I know you listen. Ace of Coins, beautiful. Ten of Wands. And another Chariot. Think things are like you're going places. There's no doubt about it. Um, now the Ace of Coins is always a really positive omen of something like a good offer coming to the table. Now, I wouldn't be surprised by this. All right, this is probably an effect of something you've already been setting in motion over the past several months or the past several weeks or whatever the case is. This is the effect of what happens when you put in time and energy and investment into something. You get something for it, probably because it's a coin, right? There's something material. Now, a coin, I often feel, is a sim symbol, right? Earth or tangible things, material things, are often symbolic of our emotional, mental, and spiritual alignment. And when we have the alignment, emotional, mental, and spiritual, things easily manifest in the material. So you're already aligned coming into March, you're already in a really good space. You already know what it is that you need to be focusing on and you know what you need to do in order to get yourself out of a situation if you're not happy about it. Okay. But it's weird how it goes straight into the 10 of wands because this feels like an extraordinary effort, a lot of effort. And you may be kind of going into patterns, going back into past behaviors that are familiar to you. This can produce results. I'm not saying this is bad or wrong. It's not bad or wrong. In fact, sometimes a lot of passion does come through here, but it's definitely backbreaking work. And often the 10 of wands doesn't really give you that much, but with the chariot, See, this doesn't feel empowered to me. This is not coming from an empowered place. This is like Aries taking an ace of coins and then being like, okay, I got to hang on to it. And then I got to bust my butt in order to make anything else happen in order, like instead of leveraging this ace of coins and leveraging this alignment, I almost feel like you snap back out of alignment, boom, and you're right back in the old thing. But the chariot, which is coming out twice here for you is saying, get back into that alignment. Like you were doing well, you were producing something, you were making things happen. You were seeing effects. And even though this may not be like the big enchilada and it may not be everything all at once, it's at least something. It's a symbol of simplicity of manifestation when you are aligned. Okay. Uh, this to me feels like it's a lot of just physical effort that is driven solely by motivation, which wears off, wears off pretty often. Uh, and I don't like that his head's down. It's like, you're not looking where you're going. This feels so much more empowered than this. So maybe this foghorn energy is coming from, the frustration of intuitively knowing that you are swapping back into some kind of old backbreaking way of doing something, because this is the only way you were ever taught. This is the only way that you know how to get it done. But what you really want is for things to be easier and healthier and for things to flow better and for things to be really setting you free. I think this is a month where you can actually like really feel the difference. And when you start feeling the difference, you start not wanting to be here more and more and more and more. And you realize how in control you actually are 
through choice and perception to be here with the chariot. That's why I like the king of wands for you, because I think this is someone who is in their chariot all the time. They never get out. They don't get out of their chariot to lift a bunch of sticks. Okay? <laughs> like, that's not what a king of wands does. He, he's in command of the sticks, and the sticks kind of do their own thing, right? He, he doesn't physically lift them up and force them to do something that he needs them to do. That is really, really, really exhaustive. All right? What else, Aries? What else is it that you need to know for March? Three of Swords. Death. Well, I'm not surprised by that. Eight of Swords. Okay. At some point in March, probably around the second week of March or so, second, third week, you're going to really start to feel um, the pressure, the pressure of the need to change. Look, you're looking at the future, but you already know that there are certain things that you're doing that are not going to get you the results that you hope for in that future. That's the foghorn energy. Okay? It's like, it's like the, the foghorn energy really is coming from a place of frustration. It's coming from a place of frustration because you're, you're struggling to figure out or to pinpoint or to make the real changes that you know you need to make. But see, the thing with Saturn coming into Pisces is those changes are going to happen they're just going to happen in really strange ways now. Like I've been talking about for years, like with Saturn and Aquarius, at least we're conscious. We can make change consciously. But as soon as Saturn comes into Pisces, we're dealing in the unconscious realm, in the subconscious world, the metaphysical world. And, and maybe that's better. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe it is, but it can feel like our life is falling apart sometimes, or sometimes it feels like everything is out of our control because it's all like happening in this mystical realm, you know? Um, but the change is going to happen. The major arcana are inevitabilities. Inevitably, this transformation is going to occur. Okay. But, but some aspect of you has to die out. And I think it's the 10 of wands aspect of you. <laughs> this is the part of you that is completely crashing. And there are going to be, I've been, I said this in uh, the Pisces reading. Now I'll say it in yours. There are going to be casualties. People that can't come along with you. An aspect of your life that can't come along with you. You can't push forward with that attachment anymore. And I, I think it's probably pretty clear what those attachments really are. Um, and for some reason with this King of Wands too, I see a lot of self-respect with this person. I'm not saying they're perfect and I'm not saying they're the ideal human because they're not, okay? <laughs> but... But right now they're, they're kind of acting like a beacon for Aries. Someone who has something that you aspire to have. Okay. Or they're projecting something that you aspire to be. So there's a lot of self-reflection going on for Aries right now. Um, and I think with this eight of swords, now, I know this card has like a blindfold on, but I don't actually think it's that blind. I think you know exactly what all these swords that are keeping you trapped actually are. Now, swords, as we know, represent our more mental realm, our thoughts, our psychology, that type of thing, um, our beliefs. And we know what's keeping us back. We know that certain thoughts have become so comfortable that our habits 
well, they became habitual, right? Our behaviors became habitual. And in many ways, you might find yourself on autopilot and you're trying to find a way to turn it off. You don't want to be on autopilot anymore because autopilot always puts you back in this 10 of wands. Autopilot always puts you back into this back breaking place. This is a very difficult cycle to break. I'm not, I'm not going to like sugarcoat it for you. It's very hard. But again, Saturn coming through Pisces over the next three years, is going to help you with that. But it's still a long time, right? But right now, it's like it's all stirring up for you. It's like, I don't want to be this anymore. I don't want to do it this way anymore. I don't want to... And then again, that frustration comes out and it can be projected as anger or yelling at someone or getting really tiffy with someone who's annoying you at the supermarket or whatever the case is, right? It's coming out in frustration. It has nothing to do with anybody else and everything to do with the fact that you want to be on this chariot, that you want to be in this empowered place. You want your life to be moving fast and fluid and you want to be succeeding and abundant and prosperous and you want all of this and you don't know how to stop cycling backwards. That's a frustrating place to be, to know you want this, but to know that what you're doing is preventing you from doing that and then to not figure out or not be able to understand how to really stop. Okay, so what else for Aries? We've got the tower. We've got... Knight of Swords, and we've got the High Priestess. Okay. Well, the Tower and, well, this is not technically a Foghorn card. I'm just going <laughs> to, that's what I'm going to call it, the Foghorn. Um, it's just so loud. I don't know when that card came out. It was like, oh, I've I'm, I'm kind of developed, for anyone who knows me, you guys know, I usually relate more to like the clairsentience, right? But I do have a fair bit of clairaudience as well, meaning I can hear things. And this card came out really loud to me. Um, <clears throat> like I even, I know you can't see me, but I kind of like even t tweaked my neck a little bit because I was like, oh man, you know, it's just like, it's so like a fire alarm going off. You want to plug your ears. That's how loud it is. So something is really trying to tell you something, Aries. Okay, specifically that inner child. I think that inner child is really trying to tell you something. And it's going to come out in some kind of inevitably randomized way, as we often see with the tower. We've got the tower, we have death, we have the three of swords. Like there is something that is being torn apart. And, and some of you... Now, I'm not saying it's like you're full on quitting your job or you're full on leaving a relationship. Like if something's good in your life, then obviously that's not what this is. Um, this is more something that is preventing growth in, in any area, preventing financial growth, preventing romantic growth, preventing personal growth, whatever, whatever it is you're struggling with, okay? And the tower is like a straw that broke the camel's back. Like there is one, like something that might happen that's just going to push you over the freaking edge this month. This may have to do with Pluto coming into Aquarius. It may have to do with Mars coming into Cancer. Okay. Um, something is going to absolutely just like crack. And you're going to realize how... I don't know. It feels, it feels like really strong. It's like a building built out of stone and it will sit there forever. But if a strong enough person comes and pushes it, it will fall right over, right? Like it'll, it'll if there's no wind and there's no external force, it will literally sit there forever. But if the force comes in the wrong direction, like from the side, as opposed to like gravity, right? It comes from the side, boom, it's just going to topple over. 
And I'm looking at this Knight of Swords is just coming in, <clears throat> pushing you. This person, you're going to, you're going to hate to love them. They are the best, worst thing that ever happened to you. All right. This is someone who knows how to trigger you, knows how to push your buttons, knows how to say truthful things. This could be a bit of information that you receive about someone like you hear it through the grapevine about someone in your past who's doing this. And it's just like, oh, like really punch to the gut, you know, just topples that tower right over. But I think it is what you need. We all need that sometimes. Uh, like it sucks. I'm, I'm not here saying it's all like gray. I'm not trying to sugarcoat it for you. I mean, it super sucks. Like, for example, if you were madly in love with someone and they just kept telling you, I don't want to get married, I don't want to get married, and then you break up and then six months later, they're already walking down the aisle with someone, like, yeah, that sucks. It's very Carrie Bradshaw and big, right? <laughs> it's like, what? You know, but it forces a growth to get you on this chariot. That's what it's for. All right. But again, you're going to, you're going to love to, to hate them for sure. It's just like, is not something pleasurable. This person is very neutral in this story though. Okay. You don't shoot the messenger here. This honestly has nothing to do with th what the story. All right. This is just a messenger here coming to topple over your tower, which you thought was keeping you safe, but in actually was keeping you, you know, I don't even want to say hidden. It was like keeping you st stuck. And, but this is all happening because your unconscious, your unconscious realm is revealing something. And usually with Venus in your sign, especially that's going to involve other people revealing things about yourself through other people, through the stories, through the, the, the lives through news of other people, but it honestly has nothing to do with them and everything to do with you. Okay. And I say that l slightly. Okay. I'm not saying again, you, it's not about faulting yourself for everything. Um, but it is about taking accountability for the things that you know, aren't serving you anymore. And the high priestess is very much doing her job quietly, succinctly behind the scenes, showing you what it is you need to see. There has been something that you have been storing. It has been pent up for so long, probably since 2008. Okay. <laughs> it's been pent up for so long and, um, it's time to come out. So Aries, let's pull out the clarifiers. So for those of you who are new, the cards I'm about to pull out are the cards we will cover in the comprehensive reading. We usually talk for another 25 to 30 minutes about all these cards. So the link for that will be found in the description box down below. Um, okay, so with the Knight of Coins clarifying the Chariot card, we also have the Four of Wands. And... Queen of coins. I'm not doing reversals today. Um, okay. And what else for the environment? What else does Aries need to know is going on in their environment? Aries for March. We have a queen of cups. We have the devil. And another three of swords. Okay. So ace of coins. What does Aries need to know about the Ace of Coins? As you are sort of towing the line between the old world and the new world. Okay, beautiful. King of Coins. I do like that Ace of Coins a lot. It's really wonderful. You deserve it. You, you did good, right? You, you did really, really, really well. You absolutely deserve that Ace of Coins. Beautiful Page of Wands. And then we move smack dab into the 10 of wands. Okay. Uh, 
another page. I like the pages for you. I even like the knights for you. Wait, hold on. Did I pull out two cards? Oh, no, I did. Oh, the lovers. That's right. Okay, hang man. Now for the chariot. King of Cups. Hierophant. Six of Wands. This is definitely something you can do. Like being on that chariot is absolutely something you can do. Seven of Wands. Eight of Cups and the Star. Seven of Coins, Two of Wands. Ooh, Devil in the Middle. Devil with Death and the Tower. It's going to be a very interesting month for you, Aries. Another Queen of Coins, which came out right here. Another Knight of Swords. People are trying to tell you something, Aries. You just really are going to have to listen very, very closely this month. So for the Tower, Ten of Swords, my goodness. Seven of Swords, Two of Cups. Five of Coins. Ace of Swords. And Strength. Five of Wands. Another Knight of Coins. Three of Cups. And this is where we will pick up in the Comprehensive. Thank you all so much. You guys know I love and adore you. Have an amazing March, you guys. <laughs> Good luck with everything. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.